Hey guys, so I mentioned in a previous video that I used some grip to create kind of a, a, a time-lapse rig that I've used a bunch for doing events and stuff. Um, so I got a lot of comments saying they'd like to see it. So I'll show you the pieces and kind of how it goes together. So it's it's based on, and I mentioned this in the other video, the, uh, the ceiling scissor. So basically this goes into a drop ceiling, locks in, gives you a pin. Now the pin is great if you want to put a light there, but when you want to put a camera on there, ultimately what I want, I could just, I mean in theory, just it's got a quarter 20, I could just screw the camera in. But that would be pretty terrible because your camera would be facing like this across the ceiling. Nobody wants that shot. So what you really want is a tripod head, right? This is a super lightweight tripod head by Manfrotto. Um, I like to get the one with the with the release plate. If, you, if you're using a heavier camera like I am, uh, you might want to go with a lighter one depending on the overall strength of the roof they're putting this thing into. Um, but uh, this one's pretty good uh, micro head. Now they don't always come with an adapter inside. So you'll see that's 3 8 square in there. And what we want to do is put what's called a bushing into this. All right, got the Mevo here. So this is going to adapt me, right? I'm adapting it down to quarter. Adapters are key around here, right? We want to always do that. So uh, it, I think this super small one that doesn't have the quick release plate is actually quarter on the bottom. So save that little piece too. So we put this on. You can also put a stud in between if you want. There's a lot of ways to do this uh, if you need to adjust your height. Um, but I'm just going to go straight into it to show you guys. So we're going to do this, right? We clip it into the roof, put it nice and tight in there. Boom, we're good, right? Then what we're going to do is, with our cam obviously the camera can go here. I can adjust it any way I want to get the look. Before you ask, yes, the camera's upside down. That's not a big deal. You're shooting into Lightroom or something. You're gonna just flip it over. Even if you shoot, even if you shoot the time lapse version that's a video, um, you can just flip it over. You know, in post, that's not really a big deal. You take your camera, on the tripod, boom, right? You're gonna put a wide angle lens. I recommend uh, setting up your focus to like hyperfocal, um, you know, in manual, so that way you're not messing around. You don't want autofocus jumping around. You want everything to stay exactly the same. Also, I set my camera manually whenever I'm doing this. Don't put it in uh, program automatic or aperture priority or anything like that. Um, unless you're doing something where you want the exposure to stay the same throughout, which is almost never what you want, right? So if you're inside of, let's say, a room and it's a party, so lights are going on and they're going off, whatever, you kind of want it to get bright and dark or whatever. So you got to pick an exposure that's going to be somewhere close to where you want it. The other step to this is how you get the camera going. Depending on your system, you might need to get an external way to, to do the time lapse. Um, some Nikons have it built in. Uh, my Canon does not. So I use the Pucker Wizard Multimax. And the reason why I use this versus the Canon uh, remote, which can also do this, is I can pre-program this. I can actually plug it into AC power with an adapter, and I can also AC power the camera if I want. I can put the thing up there, get it all pre-programmed, and with a pocket wizard in my hand, I can start it. That means if I'm doing an event or something, I can set up even multiples of these cameras in the ceiling, get them all around where I want them to be, then stand in the center of the room when I want the, the, the time lapse to start, and boof, the time lapse starts. Simple as that. We actually did something um, God, it's been a few years back now. We're at Arama sponsored a fashion week event, and we basically had a huge warehouse space. And I didn't use this system to hang the cameras. I used all kinds of other crazy stuff because it was in like a warehouse. Um, and that's exactly how I did it. I had multiple cameras. We wired into actually to the lighting system in the top, uh, AC powered everything, pre-programmed everything. We put them all up in the ceiling with you know 20 foot ladders, and then got everything ready to go. When I walked in that morning for the event, boom, I hit it. They turned on the power. Everything lit up. Did the time lapse. At the end of the day, I brought the ladders out. Pulled down the cards, dumped them, put the cards back in, reset everything in the morning, turn on the power, boom, we did that three or four days in a row. So it's really simple, really good way to do it, uh, really, really um, kind of the thing that you just want to have in your hand. And really, when you think about it, this is not very complicated, right? Um, it's actually just using two pieces of equipment you probably already have in a way that maybe you didn't think to use them. So I think a lot of uh, grip for photography is that, right? It's problem solving. So. You take the, the pieces that you have, you add additional pieces as needed, and you can create all kinds of systems to hang cameras, to hang lights, do whatever you need. So let me know, what you guys use time-lapse stuff for? Do you do time-lapses of events? Or do you do them of, uh, you know, st uh, landscapes and stuff like that? And if so, how do you hang the cameras there? So if you haven't already, please subscribe, ring the bell, and I'll see you next time.